In this lesson we are going to do a little bit of uh, calibration and just to clarify a bit what calibration is, let's use our magic doodle tool. So imagine that we have a scale, I really don't mind my painting skills, so this is a scale and we have two ends roughly. And let's say that we want to put an object here which equals one pound, for example. And if this uh, scale is calibrated properly, then if we put the one pound object here, then these guys should be in uh, perfect harmony. But what happens in Maxwell if you don't have your scene calibrated properly, or at least to a certain point, then you are risking the possibility to create a one pound object on one side, which will actually be maybe 10 pounds or 100 pounds on this end. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we have to calibrate this guy and in Maxwell that would be a scene. So we have to calibrate the scene in a sense that, for example, if we enter completely red material here, then on this side we should get exactly the same red material. I really hope this is not uh, too confusing and uh, let's delete this guy and start and uh, notice I have a emitter object which is uh, 5 by 5 centimeters so it's uh, roughly representing a light bulb and uh, here in our scene object I have exposure value of uh, 7 so I'm really using that help file which says that uh, home interiors or office uh, interiors should be roughly around 7 or 8 so in this case we are going to calibrate everything towards this uh, exposure value okay there is another route where you can actually find a proper exposure value based on uh, emitters and uh, other parameters but i believe that uh, calibrating the emitters toward pre-specified value is much easier for beginners so let's actually do just that and trust me this is nothing fancy and it's not complicated at all so First, let's create a emitter like this and we will create a default emitter and if you want to calibrate color, leave the emitter at fully white. Okay, so that's 100% white or in RGB 255 times 3. Okay, so let's uh, do that and we will apply that emitter to our emission object. Like this and uh, let's hit the fire preview and see what do we got and now we have uh, some sort of a dim illumination and uh, if our exposure value is high enough and in this case it is it says 7 so this is a rough exposure value of a home interior or office interior or a room then obviously our emitter should be more powerful okay i hope that makes sense but before that we also want to create a material to which we will calibrate this thing so in other words if i create a material let's go with a simple material like this new material and uh, if i choose completely white here and use this as a calibration point so if i apply this guy to my node and do a render obviously i really cannot say at which point my emitter is too strong in a sense that if that material is 255 in all categories i really cannot see when that value will be past so i cannot see 256 or larger value so let's use a lower value here so 
we could use 90% of uh, gray, which is decent enough for calibration, but I will use 95. This is the highest possible value of brightness you can observe in a nature because uh, there is no material on a planet that is brighter than this uh, 242. Okay, so if I render this and if I find that any part of this object has a value higher than 242, that would mean that my emitter is simply too strong. So that way I can ensure that whatever I put in here will be pretty much the same what render engine will give me. So obviously with this fire render, I don't have a way to read out these values, but fortunately I do have that option with production render engine. Now let's keep things nice and neat and uh, rename this to 242 and uh, we will increase this emitter power until we reach roughly that value in our render. Okay, so we will calibrate this emitter towards our material and this uh, exposure value. I really hope I haven't overcomplicated things. So let's hit render and see where we are at at this uh, current moment. And we will read out the values by simply hovering over here. And notice here that you can read out the values and they will change as I hover over this object. Okay, so you can read out those values by simply hovering and we are roughly at uh, 140 or so. So definitely we can increase our emitter strength uh, without a problem. So let's try maybe even uh, 100 like this. Let's hit render once again. So we are searching for roughly that value. Now you see the object is much more brighter, but uh, it still isn't there. It's roughly around uh, 200, so we can safely go even higher. So we can stop this, get back to Sinopher D, and uh, since we are at 200, I think uh, we could add just a few watts here, so maybe 120. And uh, let's give it a shot. So this is nothing fancy, you're just roughly trying to find the balance of uh, what is input in terms of uh, material that will be outputted to this uh, render. So let's see. And now it's roughly around 230 or so, 222, 240. So you don't have to be perfect here. Something that is close enough will work just fine. So always look at the brightest area of your image and uh, that is probably here. So 230 and uh, let's say that this is okay. And if you really want to be picky, you can really find a value here and fine tune this to really high level. So let's say that uh, 80 or 90% calibration is more than good enough to keep good balance between uh, what you set here in your material and what comes out in actual render. So for example, if I set this to value of 200 on red only, copy this color here in reflectance 90 also, that means that uh, if my scene is relatively calibrated, that uh, I shouldn't be able to find with my cursor value over 200 in red. So that would be this uh, first number. So anything below that means I'm using physically correct values, but if I would get a value higher than 200 here, then that means that my scene is not balanced and uh, that it is actually blown out. So you can see I'm roughly around 200, which is really, really good. Okay, I hope this makes sense and it will help you a lot in achieving natural and balanced environments with emitters.
Okay, let's stop this. Go back to Cinema 4D. And in our next lesson, we will talk about a special type of component for our materials, and that is this uh, displacement component. And uh, we will actually, in that lesson, explain this really simple concept of loading a texture or image, which will then be used instead of uh, colors or values. So let's go over that in our next lesson.